you get a periodic table, the elements and their properties listed there. A big part of what we know about all those elements can be traced back to Niels Bohr, a 20th century Danish physicist who spent an awful lot of time studying the atom and whose work paved the way, partially at least, for everything from microwave ovens to laptop computers to the atom bomb. Although Bohr repeatedly warned that physics should only be used for good. More on that in a second. But first, the atom. We know now that the atom is made up of three parts, the proton and the neutron stuck together in the nucleus, and the electrons. Bohr was the first to theorize that instead of being mixed in with the protons and neutrons, electrons orbited the atom's center like planets around a sun. It was called Bohr's model, and although we now recognize that it was a simplification of the way electrons really behave, it was tremendously important to the progress of science. Bohr also had some groundbreaking thoughts about the energy electrons absorb and emit. He concluded that the less energy the electron has, the closer it is to the nucleus, the more energy an electron has, the further away it is. But it doesn't stop there. Bohr showed how electrons can jump between levels as they absorb or emit energy. Those jumps are called quantum leaps. Knowing about those leaps and the energy they release allowed scientists to finally understand why different elements have different properties, and also helped researchers discover new additions to the periodic table, including number 107, or borium named for you-know-who. Bohr was also among the scientists experimenting with nuclear fission, or splitting the atom, paving the way for the creation of a powerful new weapon, the atom bomb. But like I said before, Bohr was only interested in the peaceful application of nuclear energy, and said so in an open letter to the United Nations in 1950. Today, Niels Bohr's early inquiry into atomic structure can be seen in the advance in nuclear energy, and his quantum leap theory is key to everyday items like microwaves and DVD players. His work also lives on in the current research into new elements like element 115, a recent entry to the age-old periodic table added in 2013, a century after Bohr's theory was proposed. And what about our lives tomorrow? After Niels Bohr died in 1962, his lab in Copenhagen was renamed the Niels Bohr Institute, and scientists there continue to build upon his work. According to recent reports, they're developing a new superconducting crystal that could improve existing electronics and also make possible technologies that we today can barely imagine. Stay tuned.